Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Thugging It Out. If you didn't know, Thugging It Out is a platform where we create a safe space to acknowledge, experience, and overcome real life issues in a positive and healthy way. This week, we got a special guest, my crazy, sexy, cool girlfriend, girlfriend, Kiana. Go ahead. Hey y'all. Y'all know this is like my girlfriend. Right, we've been through hell and back together. And on this episode, I want to chop it up with my girl and speak on growth within friendships, as well as dig a little deeper about my homegirl life experience. So first, Kiana, tell the people who you are and how you got to where you are. Okay, so I'm Kiana. Um, I'm an amazing mother, daughter, sister, friend, and really... I'm not where I want to be, but I am, I'm happy with the person that I'm becoming. Yes. Um, I think that from just watching and watching the people around me, it just made me want to be better with the way like I deal with my kids, the way I was raised, it's certain things that I want to change, so I don't do certain things with my kids. Uh, when it ha- when it comes to like friendships, relationships, all that stuff, it's just like just watching the other adults before me. Yeah, but let me get y'all like the real, real. My friend is like one of the strongest people I know. Like she has like the ability to like light up the room wherever she go. Like she just like this ball of like sunshine, and she just lighting up your life. She that listening ear. She keep it a hundred, but she also like always there. And like she just always positive despite what the hell she be having going on. So how did how do you become positive or just be able to always see like the silver lining, even though you might not even be in that type of headspace for other people? Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you because I didn't even realize I was this like positive person to you. But um Like I had said before, just like watching people around me, you know, like one thing I could say is that like the women in my family, they are like extremely strong minded and, you know, they always been positive to a certain extent Mm -hmm. or whatever. Like they did, you know, be 100 with you, but at the same time, they always find something positive to end it off with. Or whatever, and so I never really been around people that was just like mad, miserable, hated. Especially not like my mother, um, my grandmothers, my aunties. None of them was never like that. And I seen them raise kids by themselves, um, and just was able to overcome whatever it was. So with that, it was just like I always looked up to the people in my family. Like that's how I want to be. Or whatever. And then, so, you know, like with social media coming out, first of all, social media is like a joke. Girl, I hate it. It's, no. a, it's a joke. It's like an illusion of what people want to be. So I be on social media and I just be seeing people or whatever. Like one thing I hate is like, I got a friend or whatever. Like I know her personally, but, um, she older than me. She like middle thirties, almost forty or whatever. And she always compare herself to like the younger generation, mm-hmm. like my generation. And it used to irritate me because it's like, why you feel like you got the need to always make a post about how you look so much better than the younger generation? Oh, but they they be mad. But at the same time, I realized that just come from, like, her background. Like, she come from, I listened to her talk or whatever. I done been around her. We done partying and everything. And I seen her just get jealous mm-hmm. over, you know, like, whatever dude she talking to, just looking at another woman, just, like, in passing. Mm-hmm. So, um, with that, it was just like, I ain't never want to be, I don't want to be like that. No. Or whatever. And... That being miserable and being messy and all that stuff, what we put into this world is exactly what we give out. Mm -hmm. 
So one thing I'm like a very firm believer of that. So I know if I want to be if I want to be successful in my life, I can't be out here hating and jealous and mad at the next person. I got to be happy about my friend's success or my cousin's success or my sister's success mm-hmm. or whatever. I got to just be always in a positive mindset because I know my time coming. So mm-hmm. that's really much where it came from. Just like watching my my uh my parents and like my older, my grandmothers, my aunties and just watching how they move because a lot of them are where they want to be. Oh, whatever. And it never came from, I never seen them like hating on their friends or, you know, their sisters or nothing like that. So I just always want to stay in a positive mass mindset because I know eventually my time coming. To really say that, honestly, like from like your mama and like your sister, even like Auntie Liz and, you know, just everybody that's part of like your family, y'all are mostly are positive. Like regardless of what might be going on, y'all could be like in the midst of a storm, but y'all always be able to be like, just laugh about the shit. Like it'll be all right. And that's, yeah, you gotta like, pass. that's just something like a lot of people can't do. And, you know, see me sometimes it would be hard for me to do because I'm kind of like a realist. It'd be like, you can't tell me that this shit ain't shit. <laughs> like this is shit. But y'all be like, girl, you better make the best out of that shit. And that's really just something that I wish a lot of people had. And it's great that you can mm-hmm. actually, you got it, like, for real. Like, people really do need to take notes from y'all. Because y'all be having something to say. Like, y'all just that encouragement. Yeah. But, go ahead. Oh, no, I, was oh, I thought she was going to say something. Like, I was agreeing with you, girl. You know, you know, <laughs> or whatever you let it be known like your time is coming sweetheart <laughs> but what can you say is like one of your life's hardest challenges that you've been through and with that challenge what helped you get through it like how did you overcome it my hardest challenges um so this is still something that I'm working on but my hardest challenge challenge in my life, and I think this is like what's really holding me back from being whoever it is I want to be, is that I'm a procrastinator, like a really bad procrastinator. And then not so more, not so much of a procrastinator, but I do a lot of self doubting. Like I get nervous and I get scared, and I just let that hold me back from whatever it is I want to do. I could come up with some real good ideas. Mm-hmm. We done talked about a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. but I ain't put the pedal to the metal. I don't know and why. It's because I procrastinate and I let whatever comes to my mind, I let that get to me, and it keep me in the same box. Or whatever, like I said earlier, I'm not where I want to be, or whatever. And on a positive note, I am becoming the woman I want to be. But as far as like overcoming certain challenges, that's the biggest one for me. It's really hard for me to, you know, like, um, it's just it's just hard to once I start thinking about stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I could do this, I could do that, I could do that. And then something in me just be like, it, it just scares me. Mm-hmm. And it scared me to the point where it's just like, you know what? I'm going to stay at activity eight. <laughs> when you basically can be the activity director, but you just don't want to talk about the board. My mama trying to tell me for the longest to go and get my activity director's license or whatever. She think I'd be a really good activity director. But for some reason, I haven't like press down on that gas pedal yet girl you better just go like I always tell people you keep just procrastinating when whole time though you just still staying stuck when you could have probably been way further than you are right now because I mean Mm -hmm. really be honest what's the the worst part of not moving forward is failing I mean we all gonna fall so all you have to do is get back up but we'll get it together eventually but um, another one. How do you quote cope with everyday stress? Because you know, see me as person that kind of deal with like depression, anxiety. I'm a kind of person that I just kind of isolate myself, like right off the bat, like up. I ain't feeling it. You know, everybody know I would go ghost and be like gone. But 
how do you necessarily cope with it? Okay, so um, on my daddy's mother's side of the family, right, they have a bipolar depression that runs in the family. I had like a great grandmother, I had an auntie, I had a cousin that deals with it. Not my grandma, my great grandmother more so anymore, but she used to. And so talking to my grandmother, which is my father's mother, about, you know, just like our family family history and, you know, what does she do? And one thing she always told me was that, you know, she because she knew how 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 the um illness like bothered her family Mm -hmm. she realized that you know she didn't want to be like that so what she does what what she does is if she can't control it if it's like out her hands and there's nothing she could change about it she just put it in god's hand Mm-hmm. And, you know, becoming an adult, I realized, you know, that's, you know, that's pretty much how I move or whatever. It done been plenty of times, you know, like with me um, living on my own where I felt like I couldn't pay my rent or certain bills couldn't be paid. And it was just like, I stress over it. But then once I started thinking like how my grandmother told me she thought, or whatever, and I just take my go to work, or whatever. I'll be able to pay my rent, mm-hmm. or whatever. And it was not always like that. I probably still be behind, but you know, once I was done with my lease, I didn't have nothing to owe. Right. And yeah. so even just like with um how how I handle like relationships and friendships and all that stuff, if I can't change how what you got going on or have it, I'm not going to stress myself out about it. Oh, so you one of the people that be like, oh, so you're going to cheat, so I'm going to cheat better. <laughs> Period. <laughs> we going to stay together, girlfriend. We is going to stay together. <laughs> we going to be one cheating couple. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. It's crazy. I just saw a meme where they said, okay, you go ahead and cheat because when it's my turn, I'm going to have a baby. <laughs> they is, is, and that shit is just so funny. That's too funny. I want somebody to listen to this podcast, so I ain't gonna say too much on that. But hey, my folks gonna be like, "Wait a minute, what? like, who were you talking about?" But Woo! um, but yeah, it's just like I can't sit up here and constantly worry about things that is really out of my control. If I could change it, if it's something going on with me or like my kids, yeah, I'm a you know get on top of it. But like just unnecessary stress. Or whatever, I let that shit go. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on it. I'm not gonna let it constantly replay in my mind. I gotta figure a way, figure out a way to let it go. Mm-hmm. And usually when that when I when I do that, or whatever, I end up with a better outcome. I could sit there and like go to sleep and pray on it. And when I wake up the next morning, I feel a lot better. Not saying that the problem is solved, but I put it into God's hand. I prayed and I let it be. Period. Let it be and let it be. That's right. In the words of one of our old residents. Okay, let it be and let it be. That shit makes me so funny. So what's your relationship status? You talking about some, you on some, some tip of tap. Go ahead and tell people what's your relationship status. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> I hope he read. I hope he listening to this because you know I always been crazy over P with the big thing. No, just please. Girl, I'm back. <laughs> oh my God, no. Keep that it up. No. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I am in a relationship, and we just gonna leave that at that. Okay. Okay. So you on a marriage path, or you think you're gonna be a hot girl forever? With background. Um. Did you say <laughs> yeah. y'all y'all gotta peep the name call and she around <laughs> she like, no, hey, like, if y'all know 
me and Kendra, that's because I'm gonna call her Kendra for the moment. If y'all know me and Kendra, we always give it somebody some nickname. Okay, nickname for day. Nickname for that. If we give you a nickname, you matter a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> That's somebody. How you with people. <laughs> but um, no, I want to get married. I'm not really in a rush. Yes, I feel like at 30, it's like, you know, it's time for the games to stop. But at the same time, it's so, it's weird dating in Chicago. Girl, that dating pool is trash. It's so trash. Even when you put your, you could, you know, put all of your stuff in one basket and let them know up front what it is you got going on. They can put their stuff in one basket, but they still going to come with some type of baggage. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm not in a rush to get married. I want to get married. I want to be committed to somebody, but I'm not, I'm not rushing it and I'm not going to force nobody. So it's gonna happen, okay. and when it does, it's gonna be a we getting married in Vegas. Okay. Um, or Cancun. Be there with bells on, happy as hell. Like Woo! finally, finally, she fucking her life up. <laughs> okay. So how you feel about me? You know, me and you. We was like. What we like the we was like one of a kind, like kicking it all the time out in these streets. We did a lot of crazy stuff. We used we did some stuff. So as far as like, you know, me, I, I didn't kind of became a lame all over again. Gonna be somebody's wife. And do that make you feel some type of way as far as like the friendship? Like, do you prefer like the old days or like you kind of adjusted to like this new? person that I am or do you just miss Kendra so I know a lot of people be missing Kendra but you know you my girlfriend girlfriend so where you at with it oh um, first of all I'm really excited about you getting married I think I done expressed that on multiple occasions so of course I'm not you know feeling no type of way about the person you become and I feel like we all got to elevate at some point and evolve into a, a whole nother person because ex- who we was five years ago, we miserable. knew we didn't want to be those people. <laughs> we were miserable. <laughs> and I can honestly say we got the balls to say like we was miserable, but that was all right. We talk about that so much or whatever. So no, I don't want to be that same person. Do I miss, you know, having you close by? Of course. I do, um, do I miss, you know, like I look at when you start posting because uh, Kenya got all the snaps. I got all she got memory. every memory that we probably ever <laughs> shared with each other. <laughs> every moment. And if she had a, if she had an iPhone at three years old, she'd have those memories too. <laughs> okay, I keep it all. I got receipts, girl. So when I see that stuff, I'm always just like, oh my god, our life was so lit. It was so much fun. We had a lot of fun. So. Of course, I miss you. But at the same time, I'm happy with, you know, the person that you becoming. I'm happy with, you know, the way you choose to live your life. I'm I'm happy with Romeo. Oh, I feel like he is another, um, he ain't you, but he is a, a, another party to the party. Like we done been out. I done third wheel with y'all and I didn't even it didn't even feel like a third wheel. You heard them earlier talking about some it's my girlfriend too. Like, no, it's not <laughs> like so no, not that type of party. Um yeah, I mean, I'm I'm I miss having you close. But I know like whenever we do see each other, like every time we see each other, even if we just sitting in the house getting drunk and it's getting boring, mm-hmm. we still have a good time with each other. We definitely do. It's always something. Hopefully y'all move closer or my cousin was talking about we all just need to move down out of your house. Girl, y'all can come or we could go somewhere else because I really been thinking like Arizona is where I want to go. Chloe was sitting up there. She was like, we need to have a meeting and the meeting is that we need to do a group move and we all just move to Memphis. I said, girl, I tell you, okay, y'all moving to Memphis. I think about moving to Memphis every three days. Girl, come week. on. <laughs> I be trying to tell y'all. We gonna make it work. 
but so yeah, like girl, I'll be missing you. I'll be bored. I swear, looking at looking at those memories though, it be bringing back so many memories. It be stuff that I be forgetting. Then set there and happen, and then you come and post something, and it be like, girl, don't she don't got this still. <laughs> like flashbacks, like oh my god, I remember exactly yes. that day, that moment. We used to exactly we used to have so much fun or oh, whatever. Mm. We 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 had our moments where we was like miserable doing stupid stuff. <laughs> Oh, whatever and then we kind of like overcame it and we just bowed out we had a good time mm -hmm. or oh, whatever we used to get out of work go do whatever we was gonna do with our kids and then be out okay. in these streets we was regulars <laughs> okay do not and that's another thing just because we used to be out a lot we took care of our kids like that's the difference from a lot of people mm -hmm. now they say fuck them kids like we originally was the ones that said fuck them kids but yet and still, we spent time with our kids. Yeah. We used to have fun. They used to have fun. Yeah, they kind of grew up together. Now they all big as hell. And I'm the only one with a fucking toddler. But hey, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. You know, mm -hmm. since I left, my girlfriend got a lot of different friends. It seemed like every day this bitch got some new friends. But what is your non-negotiables in friendships? Because I feel like me and you... We got like a different like friendship than like your other friends. And I feel like every friend also have like different friendships. So what are your non-negotiables? Okay, so non-negotiable in a friend. For one, um with me getting older, I don't look for I, I had friends that felt like I was supposed to be all to them. I don't need those type of friends around because for one, we all got our own lives out here. And I'm not I'm not with my friends on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like whenever you see me, I'm with this friend and I should be with you, or I shouldn't be hanging with them friends and I should be with you, I don't need those type of friends around. Or whatever. I'm really more so about protecting my peace. So I don't have time to be sitting up here arguing with you, trying to explain myself as a friend and trying to get you to understand how much I care about you. I feel like that should be already, you should see it in our friendship. I got friends that I've been friends with for, for diapers because our parents grew us up together or whatever. I got friends that I've been knowing for like 20 years, like people I went to school with. And then I got friends that I just probably became friends with maybe like a couple of years ago so if i if i see you know like you might not be getting along with this friend i'm gonna keep y'all separated and and you know be your friend or whatever to you but i don't need you sitting here you know trying to judge my friendship with anybody else or looking at it like this friendship is more than that friendship or whatever i'm all y'all friends and whatever I'm all I, whoever I call and I don't think I got like a big circle of friends I really think it's small or whatever and it's really with people that I always have been friends with yeah. or whatever for like years so I just look at it like if I gotta if you got a question you gotta constantly question me or whatever and if I gotta constantly question you then I really don't need you as a friend yeah, but I think as we grow, I feel like everything changes from like clothes, from places we hang out to even people. And honestly, I feel like even throughout the change, just because we like kind of change how we deal with each other, don't necessarily mean like it got to be like bad blood or that me and you like not friends. It could be like we was best friends, but then we end up being associates. Like, and I think that's fine. I think just with females in general, I think. They don't allow each other to grow. And once you start to grow, it starts to become like some type of weird ass beef or relationship, which is weird. And I think only girls do that. Yeah. And that comes from the way they was raised, too, as well. Yeah. Like you be sitting, um, you be sitting here like watching certain people and some friends or whatever. Like I had a friend who literally done for her mama her sister her auntie her grandma all in them and they all just like that they be sitting up there boxing all each other or whatever and it's just like 
when we get into it, you be thinking you finna put your heels on me. Girl, we is not finna sit up here and fight. We too old to be fighting, first of all. And if you want to sit up here and fight, we don't need to be friends. Okay. But that comes from the way that they were raised because it ain't nothing but a bunch of fr- a female females in a family. And, you know, like I said, that jealousy and all that stuff, all that stuff starts at home. They watch their mama, their grandmas, or whatever, talk about other people in the neighborhood or they friends that, you know, they probably was playing with their mom, uh, they kids, they sitting up there watching their mamas and grandmas talking about their own friends that they thought was their parents' friends. And they are just, you know, that's the way that they was raised. So they do the same thing in their friendship. Right. But uh, yeah, I, I think girls are crazy. And as I get older, it's one of the things where it's like some friends I could do without. Just some people in general, family, whoever, you could just do without. What do you think is like the worst part of motherhood? Because I feel like everybody try to make it seem like motherhood is like this, like it's an honor to be a part of. What do you think is like the worst part about it? Um, all right. First I'm gonna apologize if y'all hearing all that little tapity tap to tap. Uh these dogs, they got tap shoes on around here. <laughs> don't do but um huh. I said don't do them dogs. It ain't Hennessy. Not I'm just saying. <laughs> Girl, don't do that. Mama Sam gonna kick you out. <laughs> All right, so for me, the worst part about motherhood. Okay, so um, like I said, I was raised around a lot of, you know, like strong women. So I, my kids, when they were born, they were born into that village mm-hmm. or whatever. So I didn't never really have like a hard time with like a lot of things. If, you know... I needed a babysitter. I was able to get a babysitter. If I needed help with something, I had people that was willing, you know, to help me or whatever. That's how my family was. So I didn't really have to struggle as far as like raising them. But, um, and I feel like, you know, you can kind of, you can kind of vouch for this, even though it's not the same, but it's kind of similar. The hardest thing for me about motherhood is, you know, my son's father. He passed away. He passed away when my son was five. And when my son was five, it was hard for him. It it wasn't hard for him to, you know, he didn't pay attention to what exactly was going on or whatever. But as my son got older and he realized, you know, his father is gone. And then, you know, he was, he got older and like with all of this technology and all this stuff, he was able to Google a lot of stuff about his daddy so it became harder on him and it was like once he was old enough to express how he felt he started expressing how he felt and that was hard for me because I probably had already you know done accepted his father passing or whatever I was able to move past that and just you know realize you know I'm just raising my son alone but you know my son um my son told me that he cries when he by himself because he think about his father and it was just like when he first told me that it kind of like it it had me ready to cry because it was just like I didn't never really realize you know even though I moved past his father dying that he still grew up and realized what was going on. And so that's really the hardest thing for me is like trying to raise my son to not not so much go down the same path because he already don't want to go down the same path, but just helping him overcome, you know, with dealing with his father's death. That's hard for me because once he talked about him, I started getting in my feelings and I started, you know, like wishing and, wishing things was different and you know 
I even get mad at them and plenty of times I done set up there call myself praying and I done started arguing with myself in my head thinking like I'm talking to Cass like why you leave you know like stuff mm-hmm. like that like you left him when it was a time that he needed you the most or whatever mm-hmm. not me needing not me needing him but you know you got a son out here and I just felt like I wish that he made better decisions I wish that you know he would have thought more about his son because that was his only child before he just, you know, made these rash decisions that he ended up losing his life. And now my son has to grow older and watch other people with their fathers, like even like watching me with my daddy or whatever. Mm-hmm. I can't explain to him and tell him that everything is going to be OK because I still got a daddy and I got a daddy that's always been in my life. But to see him, you know, like watching other people, you know, with their fathers and then him coming back, you know, wanting to talk to me about it. Sometimes I don't even be knowing what to say. So to me, that's really like the hardest thing about motherhood is just like, because I want so much, I want the best for them. And then it's like, you know, when he heard it, even like when he don't even display emotions of you know being sad or anything is dumb and plenty of times you know I just would automatically just assume that his mind is probably elsewhere because he just been in his room minding his business or whatever you see him like spaced out sometimes and he older now oh whatever my son is 13 so that's pretty much really the hardest thing about motherhood or whatever you know these fathers I feel like they need to be more aware that they got kids out here that need them more than these streets let me tell them like i you know me and you definitely can relate on that level even though like jamal father is not you know deceased but he's still not around he's not gonna be around he ain't probably see his dad until i don't know when and it's frustrating because we as women and we as mothers, we are expected to pick up the pieces and we are expected to have the answers when if we really be 100% honest, it's low-key impossible. We cannot relate to the pain because, like you say, me and you both have fathers, like active fathers that's been around, so we don't know how it feels to not have a father. And at the same time, it's like how you, you got a this boy that you're supposed to raise to a man, and of course you have a village, but it's always going to be like that void that we are not going to be able to feel. And I think, I think that's really like probably the worst part from like just in general. And I really wish more people would just be a more just conscious and just make better decisions. Cause even now it's it's like, even as they get older, I feel like it's getting harder. So this kid, when he was young, it was like, okay, we'll get through it. But now that they're getting older and then you're starting to see more ways of them like their fathers and it's like certain stuff that you just know. This is something that I'd be like, okay, go talk to your dad. Like, you need your dad. And they don't have, they don't have that luxury no more. And that's just fucked up. It just kind of made me a little sad a little bit. Even like, even if they have like a father figure, the, the father figure still doesn't feel the void of them wanting a parent. Mm -mm. or whatever they they biological parent because you know like the father figure whoever the father figure is in their life that's still not their father Mm -hmm. and so it's still you know like a constant struggle with you know just getting them to just be just you know like my son with my son um he (laughs) Um, with my son, I've been, you know, with this guy that I've been with for like two years and like the guy, you know, like whenever my son's birthday comes around, he try to, you know, include himself. He, he make plans on what to do. You know, he give me advice on things to do and all that stuff. But the minute cats get mad, he still go, you ain't my daddy. Mm-hmm. Jamal did the same oh, whatever. <laughs> and so it's like, they, they they still because their father is not around they looking at it like i don't have to respect you you ain't my daddy and it's just like it's a struggle because for us you know we done here we we had our moments where we oh yeah i can that's i can really say like these fathers really do like need to do a better job with making sure that they 
just make more conscious decisions when it comes to these kids because it's really the kids that suffer. Even though like we got it hard as mothers because we're responsible for them, I really feel like the only people that suffering is the kids. Mm-hmm. No, that's really true. And even like, you know, not even just like with uh parents that, I mean, like fathers that's like done passed away or whatever. I got two kids and they both got separate fathers. And like, even my daughter's father, um, you know, he walked away from my daughter off of this weird rumor that he heard or whatever. And my daughter used to struggle with why my daddy not picking me up no more, why he don't, why he don't love me no more, or whatever. And I ain't never talked down. Um, I ain't never talked down on him to her, but because I never seen nobody like him, like I said, my aunties and my uh, you know, my granny and all of them, they raised they uh kids alone. So I ain't never seen them do that. But at the same time, I always let her know once you old enough you have that conversation with him so he can explain to you why he chose to make the decision that he made and it's hard or whatever like it's hard and I feel like these the the men and it's you know women out here that's doing the same thing but you know we gotta remember like these kids ain't asked to be here Mm -hmm. so I think now because death is coming so easily like I see a lot of men on Facebook that's really like you know what I ain't got time for this I ain't got time because I got kids out here that I'm trying to raise or whatever, and I applaud them. But then it's still a big percentage of people that is just living a life and not caring about the fact that they got these kids out here. And these kids are the ones that's really suffering. So that's really my hardest part about uh, motherhood, just having to raise my kids by myself and explain why your father not coming home because he passed away. And your father not coming home because he choose to. Mm-hmm. Not so much come home, but you know, you know what I mean. You know, can't be, you know, not present. But I can say, but I'm realizing more and more, even like from different, from like not that aspect of, you know, having a present, you know, co-parent. I just feel like the amount of time that it takes to raise a kid, I feel like it's really overrated. And I feel like that's something that we don't talk about. Like, even I see, like, people that's younger than me or, like, people that's, like, in high school, like, fresh out of high school, I feel like sometimes they kind of, like, in a rush to get into motherhood and not really realizing how hard and how it's overrated because, I mean, I get it. Some people, is, you know, some people are not able to have kids. It takes a lot of other people to take a long time to have kids. But I feel like people really forget that you got like a life that you could really live and it's almost impossible once you become a mother because regardless of what a daddy at, if you got a good baby daddy, a good co-parent, a husband or whatever, you the one that's the main provider for that child regardless of what Mm -hmm. the situation is. Like, I think me and Romel be having a conversation too because people be like, I always been here since day one. It's like, yeah, but if we really be 100% honest, when it comes to like child care or like the doctor or any type of situation, I'm more so is always going to be the one figuring it out. Not saying that he's not there because of course he's a present father, but it's always going to be me like, oh, I got to take my baby to the doctor. I got to make this doctor's appointment. Oh, I got to fix his son to eat. Or if they crying, they need something. It's like, you always got to be there. And I feel like that's low key something that people just jump over. Like they got their daddy, but it's like, you they mama so you know how much draining that is like it's draining yeah it is do you get that sometimes when you just feel like you just be sometimes tired of being a mama not saying that you don't love your kids less but I do sometimes feel like being a mama sometimes you just be like can I turn this off like can I put in my two weeks can I get a break that's what I mean when I turn it off Huh. What mama oh, mama. Say? <laughs> she's talking about stuff. That's what I mean when I say I need a wife. <laughs> oh, you're laughing, but I, I have a book and I'm gonna show you. Look, my mama done joined a group chat. <laughs> what's, the, what's the book? Uh, Kenya said, What's the book? She said, What's the book? I got a now she got a panic. Okay, so you know, I'm trying to start this book club, but we definitely could start a book club on Zoom. Um, you know, we could do a virtual and we could get into it and just 
Ain't nothing to it but to do it. We can do that, but piggybacking off of what you had, um, the question that you had just asked me. Yeah, I mean, even now, you know, like I said, with my kids being older, it's still just moments where it's just like, it get draining being a parent. And especially because even though you think like when they're younger, you know, you have to be there for them every step of the way because they're younger. But even when they get older or whatever, you know, my daughter, she is a lot more... Um, clingy to me mm -hmm. and it's just like sometimes I be look I called my mom and did yesterday because I felt like that they set up here and um they left me all day with the kids <laughs> I felt like I was supposed to just be picking them up and dropping them off at school they done started this new school or whatever I done been out here since Friday it is I mean it's uh Tuesday it is Friday now I need my time my mom and daddy my mom and daddy was laughing at me but now i'm talking about yesterday ah, okay. i called them yesterday like uh y'all need to come get y'all kids like my ship Why am out. I still out here <laughs> like my ship is done y'all ship. but i really feel like that's one so of the things that like, you said what no nah, i was just about to say so yeah it, it's times where it's just like even if it's not you know like going out partying because i'm a lot more older now and i don't have situations that that happened to me that was it's like you know what this party and thing out here in Chicago is not for me no more or whatever but you know just wanting that peace or whatever like my own well I don't have to worry about getting up and cooking for my kids because they hungry as soon as they wake up and then I got to worry about cooking for them again because now it's lunchtime and they hungry or whatever or just like yelling at them to tell them to stop doing this and that or whatever it's times where it's just like and even though like I said I, I my kids it's a village behind me but at the same time when I feel like I'm with them too much it'd be like I need you know my own little time to myself because it's just too much and I mean it's, it's so funny because I say that all the time like when they be here when they be with me for the weekend I'll be like they need to find them something to do because on the weekend I ain't sitting up here look, getting up early in the morning trying to figure out what I'm eating. I can sit up there and drink me some water and probably go back to sleep mm -hmm. or, you know, get up and move around freely. And I probably won't eat until later on that day. But if I got my kids with me, you know, you got to feed them. And then mm -hmm. the kids are growing. And so they sitting up here like, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Or whatever. It might not be all at the same time. And it's just like, whew, y'all should have found y'all somewhere to go this weekend. Girl, that be me. That's why my kids, shit, they go to bed at 9 o'clock. I don't care. People be like, but Jamal is 11. I don't give a shit. He gonna get out of my face at 9 o'clock. He can go upstairs in his room and don't look at me. Don't come and ask me for nothing because it's enough. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I definitely get that or whatever. It's, it's times where it's just be like, you know, like I said, you don't got to want to go out and do anything, but just to have your own, like, peace of mind. Or whatever, mm -hmm. because like you said, we, oh, because we both are, we both was teenage parents, or whatever, mm -hmm. and you know when I had got pregnant with my son, or whatever, me and his father basically that was something we wanted to do, not even thinking about the future, or whatever, mm -hmm. not thinking about everything that's gonna come with being a parent, or whatever. We was just thinking we was in love and mm -hmm. doing what we was doing, and when a baby came, we thought that it was gonna be peaches and cream. And right. he's not even a or whatever. And so it's just like, you know, with us having that responsibility of being a parent, because like you said, we is like the, the main provider or whatever. Not saying, you know, like the father isn't as much as a provider, but at the same time, them kids look for their parent, their mama, mm -hmm. for every single thing. Even if the father is around, I look for my mama. I call my mama before I call my daddy for a lot of things. Yeah, or whatever true. so that's just always have you know from probably Adam and Eve that's probably has always just been like kids just always look for their parent they they mother first and it's like when we out here just making these rash decisions when we young we thinking like oh this is gonna be so sweet it's gonna be cool I got my mom in it it's gonna be just like that or you know whatever it don't turn out that way
No, I really don't. I think everybody's situation and story is completely different. You can't never base your stuff mm-hmm. off what you see other people do because it's going to set you up. But mm-hmm. is there anything that you would redo? If so, what would it be? Like one mistake, one day, what's something that you would just redo? Um, well, we talked about that already. We literally just got off of that. But if I could redo anything, honestly, it would be being a teen parent. Like, I wish that I would have, I felt like, and this is, the I don't know how this is going to come out, but I feel like because I started having, I had my son when I was 17 and I had my daughter when I was 19, I didn't want to go. I felt like I needed to work. And so if I could change anything, I really wish that I would have waited to have children. I would still want the same two kids. And supposedly, um, I'd be looking at like psychics, like stuff on Instagram and stuff like that. So supposedly, or whatever, even like if we have abortions and miscarriages, them kids still gonna come back to us. That's what they be saying. But I would still want my same two kids. I would just wish that I would have waited. Um, I'm so grateful for my son's father because even when he was a father to my son, he was a father to my daughter and he wasn't even, we wasn't even together or whatever, but he knew that my son had a daughter and he took the extra steps to help me out with her as well. But that little girl daddy, I would definitely redo that over. The whole family. Girl, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't. I was going to say something, but I'm not even going to do that. No. But it's crazy because I don't think I would redo that. I feel like me becoming a teen parent kind of taught me a lot of responsibility. What I would redo would probably be me taking my gap year from school. I feel like when I went away from school, I think I should have just stayed out there. I think I should never came back. But I think I should have just was like, yeah, I'm going to make it out here. Because I feel like me being a teen parent, it kind of gave me like that push and that drive to just don't stop, just continue to keep going. Right, but that was that was what it gave you. But for me, I felt like that because I was a teen parent, I needed to work to provide for my kids. And maybe also with my procrastination, I feel like my procrastination probably came from me always thinking like I can't go back to school right now I need to work if I go to school I'm gonna want to go to school full time and I need to work to take care of my kids so mm-hmm. I just wish really like I would have waited to have kids waiting until I was more you know like stable like I look at my sister and um you know she like almost she about to be 30 next year and you know just seeing like the freedom that she got and you know the fact that she just trying to get her life together before she started having kids i wish i would have gave would have sat back and gave myself that option it's crazy because so, i always me and angela was like so like so much like i really thought that i was gonna be like living angela life like i'm just gonna be the rich the rich auntie i watch the kids when i want to but then when i don't it's the no but somehow it didn't work out like that but i guess I mean, it was fun either way. <laughs> I think I had more fun this way than probably the other way. I think the other way probably would have been boring, though. Probably yeah, boring. I mean, like I said, I'm I'm grateful for them. I, we definitely still was able to ball out and have a really good time. Even though we had kids, mm-hmm. we still was <laughs> able to enjoy our life. And that just come from the that village that we had behind us or whatever but you know when I started thinking about like what I wanted to do in my life like when I was like um getting out of high school I always go to school right now or whatever not even thinking you know like I wanted to go to college you know like they had stuff in place for people with kids in college I allowed my my um the bad voice in my head hello Like a, I think we're getting a little long here, but it's been good chopping it up with your girlfriend. I think a lot of people gonna be able to relate and be like, I see why I need a Kiana in my life. (laughs) 
But yeah, that wraps it up for this episode, y'all. I want y'all to be grateful, be blessed, be thankful, and most importantly, keep thugging it out. Peace. Bye. Bye.